This tutorial is for the water observations from Space Algorithm. This algorithm was developed in Australia and it does an outstanding job of detecting water. Uh, it's been compared against the Landsat QA water flag, it's been compared against the Normalized Difference Water Index, and it uh, does a superb job of finding the presence of water. They have tested it in a, a number of places in Australia with about 97% accuracy. I urge you to go check out their water observations from space website. A lot more information is there. It can tell you all about the algorithm, how it was developed, and how they're using it. So let's go back and look at some of these results and walk through the algorithm. So this is typical for our Jupyter Notebooks for the data cube, suppressing warnings, importing the data cube. We add in some libraries here for some NumPy X-Array functions in MATLAB. And then we also have uh, our data cube API. So none of this gets altered. Anywhere you see a change here tag, that is a place where you can modify the algorithm as a user and choose new functions to, to run. In this particular case, we've chosen the Landsat 7 platform and we've chosen the Kenya data cube. This LS7 lead apps and the L78 LASRC, that stays the same for all of them. You'll just change the country here or the platform if you want. You go down here and it loads in and prints the extents of the data cube. We'd like to know the latitude and longitude extents to make sure that we pick a region that, that is within the bounds, otherwise the code won't run. And we want to look at the time scale to make sure we pick a time range that runs within the bounds. In this particular one you can see in Landsat 7 it goes from January 4th, 2000 to December 31st, 2017. So a lot of data for Landsat 7. If we look here, there's another section where we could change the analysis region. This is probably the most important place you're going to change where you want to look. And the analysis we've chosen here is over a Dakinai Dam in Kenya. This is a small dam uh, just north of Nairobi. And you can see it in the image here. The bounding box in red is what we've described in our analysis. If we go a little further, we see here, this is where we load the data set. This is called our DC load function. This is the function that takes typically the longest. We often like to print out that data set, so we just type in Landsat data set here, and it shows us what the X-Array is. So this is the pixels that are pulled out of the data cube, loaded into memory before the execution. In this case, I've pulled out 68 pixels in latitude, 126 in longitude, and 198 time steps. So if you think about this little mini cube that we've pulled out of the larger cube, it is fairly small in lat law and dimensions, but it has a very long time domain because we're going through 17 years of data. I'm going to mask out the clouds, then I'm going to do a time series water detection, and this is the importing the WAFs classification algorithm that you see here. And now we go down, we uh, apply the classification algorithm. Here's where we do classify the water percentages. So what this product is doing is it's looking through time at every pixel and determining the percent of time that that pixel has experienced water. And so when we look at the final output, it looks like this. Uh, one other thing to note that you can change is right here the figure size. I like to look at the aspect ratio so I want to look at my latitude to longitude ratio so that I get an aspect ratio for my figure that matches that. This one's a bit distorted, so I could fix this, but I won't do it now. So let's look at these results. The results we get here is anything in red is zero. It's never experienced water. Anything in blue has experienced water uh, pretty permanently. This is probably 95 to 100 percent everything in here. And areas along the edge or along the boundary have experienced water very infrequently. So you can see this reservoir, this body of water, has very little change in 17 years. It's been fairly stable, a little bit of change along the boundaries, perhaps some rainy seasons when the reservoir is a little more full than others. You can see one or two pixels along here with a change. This particular area here in green is about 50% water. So this area right in here may flood or may experience water during rainy season or some other event. So let's go down and look at some other things. This is a time plot of the total number of pixels 
in the scene that are water divided by the total number of pixels that are available. So what this is doing is it's saying if this pixel here is 30% of the scene is water. And what you'll see is that for most of the time the peak is 30%. The times when you get lower numbers, it's not necessarily that there's less water in the reservoir in total, it's that there's clouds in the way and the clouds will mess up the statistical numbers. So because there's no way to really get the statistics perfect because there's always clouds distorting the, the numbers, this is the best that we can do. And so uh, this one here is a log plot just to take a different look at it. And then finally what we do is we get the data set ready to export. And if you remove the tag right here, we export the slice to GeoTIFF. It puts this GeoTIFF in our GeoTIFF export folder and allows us to look at it. So as you'll see here, if I go over to the Home tab, I've already run this once. I come to the GeoTIFFs tab. I see there's my demo GeoTIFFs. If I click the left-hand area, it allows me to download. I'm downloading it now here. I click on that. This is what it's going to look like when it opens up. And I've done one in another case, so let's run another case before we look at the results. So I'm going to go up here now and I'm going to do a modification. And I'm going to run a new case here where instead of Landsat 7, I'm going to comment out Landsat 7. I'm going to remove the comments for Landsat 8. And I'm going to come down here into the region area and I'm going to remove, I'm going to add comment statements in here to get rid of this other dam. And now I'm going to look at the coastline of Mombasa and I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. So we have this all set up. So I'm going to do kernel, restart, run all. And this will run from top to bottom. Okay, we're back. It took about one minute to run this case. It's not a really big area. Let's go back and look and see what the area looked like. I always like to see what it looks like in a Google Earth image just to get an idea of the size. So here is all of Kenya, right? That's the whole country Kenya, pretty large area. and this area that we chose was really small down here. It's an area in near Mombasa along the coastline. So this is a water inlet in Mombasa and this is an area here. And let's take a look at what happened over this time period. Now remember we only chose Landsat 8 for three years, 2015, 16, and 17. So what you see here is a lot of dynamics in the water. Because if this was just permanent water we'd see dark blue, no water is red, but any of these mixed colors says there's a lot of dynamics happening. So if I look along this river and that here, this area here in yellow is experiencing water maybe 30% of the time. This perhaps could be a rainy season flooding event. Same goes true here. These areas might be mangroves or a water vegetation mix that it gets filled during the rainy season and then dries out in the non-rainy season. And you can see a number of things happening along here. So if you were to take this final result here. You can download this and export this to, to a GeoTIFF and then open it up in QGIS, which I've done. And here's a, a blow up in QGIS where I've applied a color mapping to it and I've got my little um, pixel mapper going and you can see the numbers change as I go along. So here is no water in the middle. It's a 100% water and I can start to see the changes where this is 50%, 40%, 70%, and so forth. Now there's other different analyses that you can do to find out precisely when and in what year any given pixel has experienced water. I urge you to go check out our user interface because the WAFS analysis tool that we have on the user interface makes a really nice time series plot of water for any given individual pixel. So let's go back to our data cube algorithm and that's the end of our tutorial.